Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today we are going to be getting highly precise as today I am sorting out whether or not this engine block I purchased is actually good or not. Now the only way to really do that is to get some precision measuring tools, not so much this one, but definitely this one, and to take thorough measurements to document cylinder taper, cylinder out of roundness, write it all down and decide if the engine's within spec or not, or if it should be bored while I have it out of the car. At any rate, this is a micrometer. This is a bore gauge. I'm gonna use the two together to take measurements on the cylinders at two points at the top and two points at the bottom. After doing this, I should know whether or not this engine is good. And if you get these requisite items and follow along, you can do the same thing for a motor of your choice. <laughs> to keep things organized, I made this handy dandy chart. You can see I'm working with my four cylinder motor here as I have one, two, three, four. And in each cylinder, I'll be taking both these measurements. So A being our top cross section width, B being our front to back cross section width, AA being our bottom cross section width with respect to the width of the motor, and BB being the width front to back at the bottom. Here we have a chart for cylinder one, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna take down all these four measurements and I'm also gonna duplicate them and average them. So for instance, for A here, I might get a misreading on my first try, so I'll take another reading. Uh, and so I might even do three readings, so I'll take A three times for cylinder one and average it, and then B three times for cylinder one and average it, et cetera, et cetera, until this chart is full, and then we'll be able to decide how the motor's actually doing afterwards. This motor right now is pretty darn clean. If for some reason you're working with a rusted block or something like that, you're really not gonna get good measurements anyways. I've wiped these cylinders walls down so there's nothing that should interfere with our measurement. I'm gonna take my top measurement just below where it's discolored here, which is where the piston ring stops touching the wall because this can be a bit raised more than usual. And I'm gonna take my bottom measurement again where you can see this discoloration change right about there, which is the pretty much the swept area of where the piston moves. Brief word on micrometers and measuring tools. Unfortunately, you can't really just buy one size of micrometer that does the job for everything. The basic principle here is though, that every micrometer has a one inch throw. So if you're trying to measure a two inch piston and a three inch piston, or a slightly over three inch piston, get totally screwed. Okay, there we go. That's really like it's full measuring travel. So it doesn't measure more than one inch total for a given micrometer size. So for the ALH, it's just over a three inch bore, so I need this three to four inch micrometer, whereas the Rabbit is actually just under a three inch bore, so I'd be using this two to three inch micrometer for the 1.6. Now, I also have a set of these. I think these are approximately called bore gauges. Basic principle here is when the handle is loose, these spring out, and then when you push them in and tighten it, they stay. So it's literally just transferring distance, a transferring distance tool, that's it. That's all it does. It doesn't measure anything on its own. So we're gonna take a measurement with this tool. We're gonna be like, okay, there's our bore size. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna measure this in our micrometer and then we'll actually get the reading from the micrometer itself. All right, so we're reading a micrometer. Uh, it can be a little tricky, but the base principle is you start with your base size. So this is a three to four inch. So we know this is approximately three inches. Uh, and then to get more specific, you look at this scale first, which reads in tenths. And so you look here and you can see right now, the way I've spun it, we're at two tenths. And then there's these little subdivision lines on the same scale I'm looking at. And those are quarters of a tenth. So, and there's one of those showing. So we know we have three plus uh, two tenths plus 0.025 for starters. Then you come over here and you read your sleeve here and let's make it so it's a little bit off just for, to make it interesting. We're at just below, that's 10, 9, 8. So you'd measure, you take the minimum reading here. So that's 0 0.008. And then you actually finish reading it up here, which these are your, I don't even know what to call it. That's 0 0.0001 increments. And you pick the line that matches up the best uh, right now, it looks like the six line matches up the best. So we'd have 
3 plus 0.2 plus 0.025 plus 0 0.008 plus 0 0.0006. So when you add those up, you get 3.2336. And that isn't just, you know, random decimal places or anything. That is an accurately read number down to the fourth decimal place, which is exactly how much precision we precision, excuse me, we need in order to be able to read engine clearances. So now if I pull up the old Haynes manual and we look at specs, this is the engine block specs. We're using a 1.9 liter. You can see the standard cylinder size is 3.13 inches. But now what's important is after we take our measurements, we're gonna calculate these are out of round limit for a 1.9 liter, 0 0.0039 inches is the tolerance there. So if we're higher than that number, it's too out of round and we shouldn't use it or it'll need machined. And then as far as the taper limit, which is how different the top to bottom is, we look at the 1.9 liter and it's also 0 0.0039 inches again. So our taper limit and out of round limit are the same. We use slightly different calculations to find them, but those are the numbers we're looking at, which is why we needed a device like a micrometer in order to be accurate. Okay, so for the ease and convenience of reading, I'm actually gonna take my micrometer and lightly clamp it in that vise over there. So I'm not trying to hold it and read at the same time. Maybe I'll show one here in real time. So you get the idea and then the rest of this is gonna be a time lapse because it's pretty much just tedious measuring work. Here we go. We got the micrometer ready to read over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and compress it for starters so it fits, cause it's actually a little bit bigger than the cylinder. Start at cylinder one because that will help my brain. And so that A measurement, which I said is going to be this way and the B measurement, which is gonna be this way. So we'll go ahead and start with A. We'll go just below the top and we're gonna get that in there like swim where you want to make sure you're not overextending it because you're at an angle man this is harder than i thought already and you can buy nicer of these slide gauges probably and that'll probably make it less less difficult to work with so yeah there's that rock and the rocking motion i'll explain in just a second this is our first measurement it's that big <laughs> now that i know it's this big you come over here And you twist the micrometer with this at the very end until it stops ratcheting. And you'll see what I mean by ratcheting in just a second. That. So that's how you know your micrometer is good and tight. And again, it's very important to keep the gauge square because that is entirely part of your reading. So see the one plus one quarter division plus we're at two, just over two on the barrel. And then if you come up here, we're at three on that little guy. Let me do some calculations. So we're at three plus 0.1 plus 0.025 plus 0.002 plus 0.0003. So, my very first reading is 3.1273. That's our A dimension, which I am calling the this way reading of this cylinder bore at the top is 3.1273. Now that's just my first reading. I'm going to redo it. I'm gonna see how consistent they are once I get going here. I might do them three times, but realistically two times at an average would be pretty sweet. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and write this one down and then we'll keep going. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and recheck that last measurement. So we're rechecking cylinder one, letter A measurement here. There we go. So for that one, I got 3.13. What my calculator isn't showing is that we actually have the accuracy of two more decimal places. It's not just 3.13, but it's actually 3.1300. So considering this was actually pretty different from my last reading, I'm gonna take yet another one. And I think three readings and then an average is actually a pretty good way to do this. If I subtract the difference between my last two readings, I was 0 0.0027 off between each reading, which if you're thinking our tolerance window is 0 0.0039, 
then this is this big enough error that it's pretty important for me to take yet another measurement. So when I add these all up and divide by three, which is all averaging is, I get as what I'm gonna consider my final reading for this measurement on cylinder number one is going to be 3.128. And here, I wonder if I should round or not. I guess technically yes, because it's six, 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 six. So three point one two eight seven. So that's our first actual reading number is three point one two eight seven for A on number one. I now have to do B and AA and BB for every cylinder in this exact same manner. So you can see this is going to take a hot second. I don't think you're actually supposed to, at least per Haynes, you're not supposed to take measurements while you're in an engine stand. While they didn't specifically say why, I can kind of imagine that you're only supporting it on one side. So the metal is, you know, heinously small amount, but still deflecting somewhat towards this end of the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this janky prop up. So actually the weight is kind of evenly held on both sides and that should mitigate any kind of deflection we're getting. Ideally, you'd probably put your whole block on a bench, but right now, I don't want to. So, here we go, balanced. Okay, and to briefly show you a update from my complete remeasure after jacking it up, you can see, I mean, these are kind of scribbly because I didn't leave enough room, but we ended up with 3.12867, which is actually 3.12866666. And our second set of three was 3.1286. So within one, I need to figure out what this is called, I think 10th, 100th, 1000th mil, within one mil of each other. And this one was a round up, so I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, we got the data. I haven't averaged them all yet. I decided to start waiting to the end to do that. Uh, but I just took about 51 plus freaking data points worth of information about this engine's cylinders. Uh, I'm now gonna go ahead and average them real quick and list those here. And then we're gonna calculate out our taper and out of round spec for each cylinder. And I think normally you might do it just one way, but we can do it all the ways in the sense that we can do out around A to B, AA to BB, and then we'll do taper A to AA and B to BB. And so we'll have two numbers representing two cross sections for each limit of each cylinder. So we'll end up with eight numbers to reference against our 0 0.0039 spec. And I'm gonna write that up here right now. Okay, so what we have here is a decanted table of our measurements in their respective comparisons. So this is our out of round, this upper portion of the table. Uh, and again, it's out of screen right now, but the max limit for any one of these numbers is 0 0.0039. As you can see, we're a teeny bit close on these two measurements. We got 0 0.0036 and 0 0.0034 but we're not out of spec yet, which means with those as our highest two, regardless of it being taper or out of round or whatever we're measuring, and mind you, I'm doing it both ways. I'm measuring out of round at the top, out of round at the bottom, taper 
on one axis and taper on the other axis and all in the engine block is good to go. So if I wanna use new pistons and stuff or just reuse, either way we should be looking just fine uh, and the most I should really need to do is hone it if anything actually so stoked that this thing is good. I mean, it cost me a thousand bucks, so it would suck if it wasn't good, and then I had to go and take it somewhere to your machine, which would cost even more money. Uh, and I will say this was a teeny bit tedious. My time lapse even cut off because my camera didn't want to film the whole thing. Um, but I do feel like doing three measurements of each measurement was worth it. Um, some of these varied a decent amount. Some of them didn't, like my last one here, basically didn't vary at all. Um, but I did feel like averaging it was worth it, especially with my pretty low grade slide gauge that I was using. On my previous 1.6 rebuild I did and videoed, I didn't remeasure anything. Um, I think it might have been worth doing the same kind of spec out for the cylinders, but that motor had been remachined really recently by a proper machine shop and it was under my ownership when that happened, so I wasn't as worried about this kind of a thing. Now that I have a different motor with zero history on it, uh, I mean, this is a service you could pay a machine shop to do for you, but I think it only really took me like two hours to set everything up, to film, to get my cardboard on the wall, to write everything down and do the calculations. I mean, two hours, it's like worth your time for sure to know that your engine is definitely good. Uh, and it wasn't too hard. I feel like my observations after doing it is that actually I found measuring the bottom to be somewhat easier because you kind of stick the gauge down in there and by the time it's down in there you're holding it by its very tip it just seems more stable than when you're measuring at the top um, but that's kind of what redundancy was for and averaging was for uh, so I'm super stoked that my cylinders are good no rebore needed there uh, and in terms of everything else I'm not so worried uh, I think looking at doing some upgrades. I am still figuring out if I wanna do pistons or not. I'm leaning towards doing them, not because the, these pistons are terribly unusable. And in fact, if I was going to reuse these, which if I end up going that route, we'll have another video just like this, where I measure the pistons, same exact concept. You measure top, bottom, top, bottom. You could do this exact same thing and end up with, is my piston still usable table? kind of thing, but I feel like I might just spend the extra dollars and get the oil galley pistons to put in this motor, because I think that'd be cool. Uh, not just cool, well, actually quite literally cool. <laughs> it would be lower, lower piston temps, which uh, in my experience with the 1.6, it's not really the failure point to be fair, but I think it'd be sick to build a 1.9 that's bomb proof, you know, like if I want to build it to 300 plus horsepower, I want the ability to do that or the the option to be there, you know, after the fact. So I might end up just going with new pistons, in which case I don't need to do this to my new pistons at all. One last minute thing I'm kind of noticing here that jumps out is the book clearance for your cylinder it says 3.1303. And that's pretty much bigger than, okay, so one is actually what it should be. This one's slightly larger and the rest are smaller. What's with that? I kind of figured they would all be bigger. As luck would have it, or rather inaccuracy of measurement would have it, uh, after looking at my measurements more, it kind of bothered me a lot that my cylinder measured size was smaller than spec, so 3.1303 is spec for these bores and larger, and I was measuring less than 3.1303, um, so that bothers me for one. And then my piston also measured smaller. So I'm about to redo what I just did with slight modifications to make it even better. So for one, we're gonna reset the zero point on this micrometer and I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. And then for another, we're gonna use a different technique with the slide gauge to try to get a more accurate read because clearly the way I was doing it, which was inserting it into the bore, letting it open and then closing it and then pulling it out and measuring it, 
wasn't quite doing it. So from what I understand, similar technique, just a little different, insert it, crooked, open it, close it some so it takes a harder measure and then force it vertical in the bore with it very much tight and then go check it. So that should actually, I think that'll increase that wall measurement we're seeing and it's probably why I came up a little bit short and then fixing the micrometer or checking the micrometer will be useful as well. So we're gonna do these two mods and then I'm probably only gonna take two measurements per cylinder just for the sake of speed, maybe even just one if we're getting a consistent measurement. To check a micrometer zero point, this one is actually supplied with these checkers. So this is the three inch checking piece or three inch standard, I should say. So right there, that's it. And it's actually reading a bit above, let's make sure it's clean. So right now, this should be reading three inches. It should be all zeroed out. And we're actually reading a little over four thou. So or 40, I can even tell you 47 thou. Um, so I'm gonna try to zero this out. And if you crank on it, you can, but that's not, that's not how these work. You're supposed to just let it ratchet and then it'll be good. Maybe the teeniest bit off of zero. So you use one of these. Little spanner guy. And you just twist the body till it lines up. That looks better. And that's as easy as it is. The body of it's just in there. So that's all to adjust zero point. If it's just a little bit off, you just grab the barrel of your micrometer and adjust it that way. So I'm not satisfied that this is 100%. Should be measuring very accurately. Got a clean sheet over here, same idea. Take the measurements, write them down, then do some calculations. So in review, I'm putting it in, and again, we're starting with our A dimension here. I am cocking it at a slight angle, tightening it, and now I am forcing it to come back. Let's try that again. Putting it in, cocking it at an angle so it's longer than it needs to be. And then I'm actually pulling it into place. So here are our finished results. You can kind of see, or you probably can't see, but in general, the trend is that we got larger cylinder values by a very slight amount across the board. Uh, and they're also tighter together. So I found these numbers tend to average better and were generally better measurements just from that perspective. Uh, they were closer than using the other method, which I would just say is an insert and expand as opposed to an insert expand, retighten, and then lean to center. Uh, and I also ended up with tighter overall tolerances on my out of round and taper. And that's a good thing. So we're still very much within spec and now even more within spec than we were on our previous round of measuring. Not that the measuring is subjective, but certainly my ability to do it accurately is debatable. So now, uh, let's take a quick look. We'll just compare our finished results here. For instance, if you look at B minus BB, our taper on that axis, uh, we see different values across the board here, quite different. And if you check each row, quite different, but generally smaller and tighter in our second version. And I would generally chalk that up to the measuring, that particular way of measuring things is being more accurate. Slight tangent precision is the ability to hit the same number a bunch of times in a row and accuracy is the ability to hit the correct number. So I would say overall we did improve our precision this time because each sample we took was generally closer together than the last time uh, without using the leaning technique. And I would also say our accuracy also somewhat improved because we're seeing higher readings which are closer to that 3.103, 3.1303, excuse me, uh, that the cylinder should actually be. So this measuring technique worked better overall for sure. Definitely lean uh, your gauge. And I would still probably recommend averaging because I did end up with enough discrepancy that I thought it was good that I averaged. Uh, but some of these are very close. Like this is 3.1298 and 3.1299. Just averages the 3.1299. Totally fine. Kind of in a recap of how things went and what I thought could make it better. Uh, I thought my uh, micrometer was actually pretty good. 
I mean, I reset it and the whole bit, but I don't see the micrometer being the weak link here. What I see being the weak link are these slide gauges. And now this is like one of the cheaper sets on Amazon, which yes, curse me out now for buying cheap engine measuring tools. Um, but I'm here to tell you that you're better off, instead of buying a set like this, I would hone in on what size you actually need. I'd recommend the two and an eighth to three and a half inch slide gauge if you're gonna go this route, but I would recommend buying one that's actually pretty nice. You know, if you spent 20 bucks on just one, it would work significantly nicer probably than this kind of janky set I bought, I think for a total of 20-ish dollars. Would further improve readings for sure, I have no doubt. Cause this thing was definitely a little bit janky at times, this lock didn't quite lock it and I would get sliding after the fact and have to remeasure. I think buying a nicer slide gauge would make everything better. In that same vein, bore dial gauges are definitely the standard on how to do this. Uh, they're a little more expensive, which is why I didn't go that route because it's basically you need the micrometer set and then you also need the dial bore gauge and they're both about a hundred bucks. But then I think you can do this really fast and efficiently a dial bore gauge you initially mic in to be accurate and then you just send her down and rock it around a bit and you can take all your measurements much faster than bouncing back and forth with these slide gauges. At any rate, <laughs> thank you for watching. I'm stoked this motor is ready to build and that it doesn't need any machining. Well, gotta check my freaking crank stuff, but I mean, the bores don't need any machining. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate ya. Have a good day out there.